About a year and a half ago, I made a video that went over the contents of my backpack EDC or my backpack everyday carry. To me, there's nothing really quite like a good setup of everyday essentials, and I kind of just wanted to share some of the updates I have going on and just what my setup looks like today. The setup I'll be going over today is pretty much my essentials that come with me in my bag wherever I go, when I'm leaving the house for the day, or if I'm just going somewhere where I know I can get some work done. I just spit a little during that sentence. This is my everyday carry. Bag edition. But first, if you're new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. Here we talk about minimalism, frugal living, and things of that nature. So if that sounds good to you, and you end up liking the video, be sure to like, and go and find the subscribe button's phone, and enter the wrong code on purpose until it's locked out indefinitely. Let's get started. So going in order of what I feel like makes the most sense, we'll start with the bag itself. And this is the Bellroy Sling Bag Light. Now there's virtually just an unlimited amount of bags to choose from out there. I've actually never owned anything from Bellroy before, but I know that they have a reputation of being high quality, and I do really like the minimal design. I believe this bag is about 7 liters in size. I wanted a bag that can fit all my daily essentials without feeling too cumbersome when I bring it around with me for the whole day. I do have a reputation of not being too careful with my belongings, so I knew I wanted something that I can kind of just throw around and not worry about it getting damaged. So I like that this one is particularly durable. It has a few neat features like this magnetic clasp and collapsing really thin automatically when there's not a whole lot of stuff in here. Now I know this sounds like a sponsorship for Bellroy, but I actually did buy this with my own money. When I find something wrong with it, I'll let you know. It has one large main pocket and then a smaller compartment in the front with two little pockets inside. The bag itself is super light, hence the name, and it has this sort of water resistant shell material. In jumping right into the contents of the bag itself, we'll start with my phone. So when I have this bag with me, I try not to leave anything in my pockets and just try to utilize the bag as much as possible. Ironically, in my last EDC video, I did say I wouldn't be upgrading my phone until I absolutely had to. And shortly after making that video, I absolutely had to. My iPhone XS Max finally died on me, so it was time for an upgrade. I wasn't a fan of how huge that phone was, so I knew I wanted something a little bit smaller. I decided to go with the iPhone 13, and I chose green because nature. I will most definitely never go with a larger phone, probably ever again. On the back of my phone is my MagSafe wallet. I've always wanted a wallet that was just attached to my phone, and this just made the most sense. It has the Find My feature built into it, which is great, and although it only holds about three cards, I pretty much exclusively use Apple Pay wherever I go, so for me this works. The next essential in my bag are my keys. I still have the same car and house keys on here, as well as the same slide locking carabiner. But this time around, I do have a key organizer from Orbit Key that keeps my keys from jingling around and keeps them in place. Also in this key organizer is this little multi-tool that has a box cutter on it that I actually use fairly often. And it works as sort of a marker when I'm searching for a specific key. Inside the bag, there's a key loop that I keep them clipped on when they're in here. And when I'm at the skate park, I usually just keep my bag clipped to the fence using this carabiner. But at the end of the day, keys are just keys, and that's all I have to say about these. Next are my AirPods. These are my second generation AirPods, and I keep them in this front little pocket so they're easy to find. I pretty much use these for any outdoor activity, like going to the park, skate park, or editing. I sometimes wish I had headphones with noise cancellation, but that typically means having the silicone ear tips, and I'm just not a fan of those. Next is my iPad mini, and this is a relatively new addition to my possessions. And before I get shunned for buying something new, let me explain a little bit. This thing actually benefits me in so many more ways than I initially thought it would. I use this for reading, writing videos, planning shots, and most importantly, all those little 
pencil drawn animations in these videos. Well, a lot of those are done with my iPad and pencil. And frankly, I'm even using it as sort of a teleprompter for this video. Being a minimalist doesn't mean just buying as little things as possible. It means buying things with intention and with the intention of using them. So far, it's brought a lot of value into my life and my workflow. So to me, it's justified. I have the Apple Pencil too with wireless charging and the Smartfolio case. The pencil makes it easy to plan shots and draw animations for my videos. And my iPad fits perfectly in this sling bag without feeling like it's taking up too much space. Next are my sunglasses. And these are something I really just hate leaving the house without. My sunglasses are a matte black pair of Ray-Ban Clubmasters that I've had for maybe a year or so at this point. I had my last pair of sunglasses for literally a decade, so I clearly keep them for a long time, meaning I don't mind spending a little bit more money for a higher quality pair. Also, I live in Florida where it's just blindingly bright outside, justifying this just a little bit more for me. The next and final thing that comes with me pretty much every time I have this bag is my Nalgene water bottle. This thing is starting to look pretty beat up, but I'm glad I got my use out of it. It fits in this bag with not even so much of a tight squeeze. The next few things that I keep in my bag aren't exactly things that come with me every single time I take this bag, but are more in sort of a rotation. And the first thing are chargers. If I'm going somewhere where I think I'll be on my devices a lot or where I think I can get some work done, I'll bring my 20 watt USB-C charging block, a USB-C to USB-C cord to charge my iPad, as well as a USB-C to lightning that charges my phone and AirPods. I'll leave these neatly wrapped in one of the front two pockets. Snacks. If I know that I won't be home for a little while, I'll try to remember to toss a snack in here for later. I have a bad habit of not bringing food with me when I'm not hungry in that exact moment that I'm leaving the house. But as of late, I'm forcing myself to bring some cashews or some easy, low effort type of snack with me in my bag. And the last thing that's in a sort of rotation in this bag is my camera. If I'm going somewhere where I think I could get some cool shots, I'll take my camera with me without bringing my entire camera bag itself. My camera, my two lenses, and all of my batteries fit in here actually quite well. So I can't pull my camera out of here like everything else because I'm, I'm using my camera for this shot. You know what I mean. I have no friends. If I don't want the burden of bringing my entire camera bag that has my drone in it, I'll just utilize this. And I'd say that pretty much wraps up my current bag setup. My setup doesn't change too often because my needs and activities aren't changing too often either. So for now, this is exactly what works for me. Anyways, I hope you got some value or inspiration out of this video, maybe some ideas of what you want to do with your EDC bag. As always, I appreciate the time you spent here watching, and if you did like this video and you do like this type of content, be sure to like and consider subscribing to my channel, and I'll see you next time.